sit right back and you will hear a tale of Christmas Eve. We'll take you on a journey to a land of make-believe. Like children all around the world, we dream of something sweet. We will take you on a journey to a land of make-believe. On a journey to a land of make-believe. Please, it's time for bed. I know you're excited, but Christmas morning will never get here unless you get to sleep. But Mom, we didn't, we didn't even finish the cake for the Christmas party. And whose fault might that be, Mindy? From what I could tell, nobody wanted to follow the rest. I put in the right amount of sugar. No, I put in the right amount of sugar. Great, we all put in the right amount of sugar. And let me guess, nobody put in, put in the flour, right? Flowers? I know we needed flowers. Not roses, Pee-wee. Anyways, what will we do about the... What, what are we going to do about the cake for the party tomorrow? Yeah, when Robert gets here, he'll, he'll want some cake. When do our cousins get here? They'll celebrate Christmas morning with us tomorrow, if you ever get to bed tonight. We'll, we'll make a new cake following the recipe in the Story. Okay, but close your eyes. But the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The children were nestled, all stuck in their beds, and while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. Just a few more hours, close your eyes, close your eyes, starry skies on a special night. 
You can always dream of candy shop, lollipop, chocolate shop, anything you like. We're not lost. No, you're not lost. Who said Bad. that? We did. Over here in the red and white. They don't call us the candy cane girls for nothing. This has got to be James. You're right. And we're your dream team leaders. Okay, what are we doing here? I heard you had a little problem with the cake. Heavy on the sugar, huh? What you need is... A, a recipe! recipe. Actually, around these parts, we call them the, the Christmas, Christmas Candy Kids. Kids. And we're going to take you on a journey down the sweetest of all streets, the, the Candy Cane Lane. You see, we need to feed our bodies, but there's a place deep inside of us that needs food too. 
insulted. This is getting a little confusing. Not really. Maybe my special friends can help explain it to you. Come on out, guys. I don't think it's fine. Monkeys eat bananas with seen in the tree. Honey is the buzz of every busy bumblebee. Robins look for worms that slither under rocks. Bugs Bunny eats his carrots to see what's up with Doc. But humans folks are different. We could eat all day, but we would still be hungry if we never stopped to pray. Charms. And Goldilocks takes porridge, not too hot or cold but warm. But human folks are different, we could eat all day. But we would still be hungry if we never stopped to pray. Woo! We need a soul food, soul food, soul food. Put your heart's been longing for, we need a soul food, soul food, soul food. What your heart's been longing for, we need a soul food, soul food, soul food. Your heart's been longing for, we need a soul food, soul food, soul food. Taste the kind. Very good. Ginger, we have a few hungry souls here looking for a great recipe. Oh, why didn't you say so? Come on in. My heart was real hungry, too, but I found a secret. What is it? A recipe for life!
your way now. Come back in about an hour and we can decorate the cake together. at the altar and that was the end. He saved and that's all that matters to him. His spiritual tummy, it can't take too much. One day a week he gets a spiritual lunch. On Sunday he puts on his spiritual best and gives his language a spiritual rest. He's just a fat, he's just a fat little baby. Well, well, of the Bible and John 3.16. He's got the biggest King James you've ever seen. I've always wondered if he'll grow up someday. He's mama's boy and he lacks in that way. If you happen to see him, I'll tell him I said he'll never grow if he never gets fed. He's just a fat, he's just a fat little baby. Wow, wow.
Well, thanks, Miss Jane. It's always been a privilege. On time for what, Jane? To finish decorating your cake, and this dream is almost over. Well, I'm not really into that whole decorating thing, but I mean, we can just put a bunch of icing on it. And, and candy cane, in honor of our new friend, Jane. But remember, we need this cake to celebrate the birthday of Jesus. Sorry, what do candy canes have to do with that? I'm glad you asked. You see, a candy cane can be one of the best reminders of Jesus. It's more than just a Christmas tree. Good evening, Jane. Well, let's look closer. It's shaped like a shepherd's staff. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. It's also striped red and white. No matter how deep the stain of sin, Jesus can take it out. No matter if you are red as crimson, Jesus can make you white as snow. It tastes good, too. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And you turn it upside down, and it's the letter J. And that reminds me of Jesus!
cake is going to be perfect. There's only one thing missing. Candles. I thought candles were only used to remember how old someone is. In this case, it's different. We light a candle to remember three special things. First, we remember the star of Bethlehem that led the wise men. Second, into a dark night, Jesus the light was born. And finally, we are to be a light so that the world will clearly see Jesus shining in our lives. keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Christmas morning. Wake up, sleepy heads. Didn't you guys get your sleep last night? <laughs> Funny you should ask. <laughs> Where's Casey and baby Bob? You mean Robert? Yeah, Robert. Oh, well, they're getting the cake out of the car. It's 
the dream come true. Here it is. Okay. I came for a king.
Thanks, kids, and thanks, Sherry, for all that you put into this. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to spend Christmas Eve. I want to read Luke 2, 1 through 20 for us this evening. We heard part of it during the uh, presentation, but I'd like to read the Christmas story for you this evening. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the house of David, and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which, which were just as they had been told. Psalm 34, <clears throat> verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Cotton candy. I'm glad they had to sing happy birthday with them. It was just, we just had to sing happy birthday after that presentation. But what that verse is talking about, taste and see that the Lord is good, is not mere eating and drinking. It's experiencing Jesus. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. It's experiencing him to the uttermost. It's living in the glow of his love, in the peace of his forgiveness, in the joy of new life, in the hope of blessed immortality. That's what we're invited to enter into. We know the Christmas story. We've heard it this evening. Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem just in time for Mary to deliver her baby. But there wasn't any room for them in the inn, nowhere for them to stay, no place to lay their heads, no place for the Son of God to be born, only a stable, far from the comforts of home without so much as a bed, in a stable in the company of animals, in the dark and dank dampness of a cave in Bethlehem, only there, the Virgin Mary brought forth her firstborn son, the Savior of the world. This baby, born in such humble surroundings, ultimately paid the price for our sins on the cross that we might have eternal life. For God loved the world so much, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, whoever will believe in him, will not perish but have eternal life. Have you opened your heart and your life to him? Have you experienced the joy of forgiveness that Jesus offers? Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. As we light our candles this evening and experience uh, the darkness, as we sing Silent Night, as we bask in the afterglow of another wonderful Christmas Eve evening, let us remind us, let us be reminded by the darkness and by the candlelight 
that this little baby Jesus, born in such humble surroundings in Bethlehem so long ago, is the light of the world. He came to call us out of our spiritual darkness, even as John's Gospel reminds us. The Word became flesh. Grace and truth dwelt among men. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. <laughs>